All right, I think I gotta work at this time. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I am playing Astralagaster, which is on the Xbox Game Pass PC. Uh, this game describes itself as a story adventure game where you are playing a doctor in Shakespearean London where you are trying to cure your patients by using astrology. So already this game looks really interesting, so I figured I'd give it a try. How may it be cure the plague? I just with the plague since it's being provoked by fever, I invented a new kind of strong water to cure it. God give you good day, madam. How may I? Are you Mr. Foreman? Um, Mr. Simon Foreman, the, the doctor? Aye, madam, I am indeed Dr. Simon Foreman. I bid you welcome to my consulting chambers. Uh, mistress, uh, mistress... Allen, Mistress Avis Allen of Lambeth. Uh, pray tell me your age, if you please, madam. I am three and thirty years of age. And how might I do you service this day, Mr. Allen? Uh, pray describe your troubles to me. Well, the pain started full late last eve upon retiring to bed. Oh, not that I am in the habit of retiring so late, but my husband did desire a special supper of cold meats to celebrate and give thanks for... for... Um, well, uh, in any case, it, it started in the night and it continued until dawning. That being the pain in my head, and the chundering. A moment whilst I make note of this. A headache and involuntary purging. Is that all? Aye, that is all. And thinking on it, my complaint to seem most trifling. And you... you are doubtless busy with important cases. Oh, like the plague! Yea, verily, mayhap, I should not have come after all. Good day, Dr. Foreman. I, I beseech you, pardon me, for I have wasted your time. Prithee, do not go. Uh, for I assure you, madam, your case verily is important to me. And tis important to you, is it not, Mistress Allen? Else you would not have come this day. Well, I... Let us consult the stars now, then, shall we? <laughs> what is the cause of Mistress Allen's suffering? my suffering. Uh, I'm guessing I just pick any zodiac sign. This is just a mild imbalance of black bile in the body. This indicates a disturbance of the mind. This provoked anxious passion associated with being with child. Suffering from evil digestion. I mean, they eat cold meats, I'm, I'm assuming. Evil digestion. Is there a rocket? And Mistress Allen, it appears you are suffering from evil digestion. It was doubtless engendered by corrupt meats. May have the cold meats you took for supper. Verily? Why, yes. My chart shows that Saturn is in cancer at this moment. Cancer rules the stomach, and Saturn is the ruler of black bile. It is a mild imbalance of black bile that is the cause of your suffering. And now you've purged it, you have merely to keep to your bed for a day and rest. The bile? Do you think, might it have done ill to my unborn child? Ah, then I take it you believe you are with child. Mayhap was the reason for your celebration last even? <laughs> Pray tell, how long has it been since your monthly courses? Aye, sir, I do believe it. For it has been fourteen weeks since my courses, and yesterday I did even feel the child quicken. In truth, tis the reason I am come, not on my own account, and not even then, if, if my situation were ordinary, 
I have been with child before, you see, but tis never. And Mr. Allen and I do pray this one will be born alive. Dr. Foreman, prithee speak true. Have I killed our child? Have I killed this child as well? <laughs> How now, madam? Speak not so of yourself, for you are the child's mother. Tis you who gives life to the babe growing inside you. And verily, if be a chandering were to cause grave harm when a woman is with child, why, then full half my feminine querence would be barren. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is just that I am. Dear lady, would God have spared you from the plague if twas not his plan for you to have this child? I own tis. Yes, doubtless God does have plans for me. How, how very kind you are, Mr. Dr. Foreman. I thank ye, and fare you well, sir. Fare you well, Mistress Allen. Present with symptoms of headache and voluntary upward purging. It judges the queerness of your full digestion, but he thinks the queerness was believed with me for reading a good mistake. Okay, so even though I was wrong, I'll take it. Hey, sir. You are Simon Foreman, the physician, are you not? Uh, these are your rooms. Indeed, I am he, and well met, sir. Be it Thomas Blagg, I have the honour of welcoming to my humble consulting chambers, the Dean of Rochester Cathedral. Indeed, tis I, Thomas Blagg. Uh, though it is not upon church business that I come to you this day, tis upon a matter of my own that I require counsel. I have lately been offered some very lucrative investment opportunities, and, uh, well, it is said that God speaks to us through the stars, does he not? Indeed he does. Tis well known that astrology is but a conduit for the word of God, as interpreted using scientific means. And now, these investments of which you speak, pray tell of them, if you please. Two merchant ships will shortly set sail on very lucrative trading expeditions. I do not possess the coin to invest in both. Hence, I must choose between them. And I must choose very wisely indeed. Mm, for sea voyages are most perilous. And if my ship were to founder or be captured by pirates, I would lose my entire investment. Aye, forsooth. It would be most lamentable to say nothing of the poor souls who might lose their lives. Who are, naturally, the greater of my concerns. Aye, naturally. And whither might these ships be bound? The first is bound for the Spice Islands of the East. Tis a voyage to be undertaken by a ship named the Conquering Cherub. The other is the Pride of Yarmouth. She is to bring back sugar from the Americas. Have you now the information you require? Then perchance you may divine for me upon which of these two ships our Lord God has bestowed his divine blessing. Aye, Dean Blagg, we may now consult the stars. Should Thomas Blagg invest in the voyage of the conquering cherub, or that of the pride of Yarmouth? Chef's name should evoke a child who is victorious in battle. Lies investment in a trading voyage will result in a change of fortune for him. House of Marriage. this let's just menu okay I feel like this is more kind of a guessing game 
the stars advise you to invest in the ship named the Conquering Cherub. I see. And why is that? Well, I have calculated that at this very hour, upon this very day, the planet Mars and the constellation Scorpio do both dwell in that part of the sky we call the House of Children. And, as it happens, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio, hence we may say that Mars is presently exalted. Mars has been exalted by Scorpio, you say? And what might that mean? When exalted, Mars represents victory. And so, with victory in the House of Children, we may read this as a victorious child. Ergo, the conquering cherub. Ah, I see. Uh, for a cherub is a, is a kind of child, is it not? In sooth, I do find the science of astrology verily fascinating. <laughs> I thank you, Dr. Foreman. You have been most helpful. The querent did wish to know which of two trading companies would have the better investment. I did advise the querent to invest in the voyage of conquering cherub. He thinks the querent was pleased with me. So it looks like I think they come in. Sir, pray tell, are these the consulting chambers of Simon Foreman, Doctor of Astrology and Physic? Indeed, tis I, Doctor Simon Foreman. And your name, madam? Emma Sharp of Shoreditch, sir. Five and twenty years of age. Welcome, Miss Sharp. And how may I do you service this day? Well, tis a trifle delicate. A man has asked me to be his wife. A dear, kind man. But, but, <gasps> I fear you will think me cold, Doctor Foreman. There, there, madam, whatever is the matter? Well, he is exceeding advanced in years. I do worry he may not be long for the world, and if he were to die, I do not think I could bear it. <gasps> Verily, I would not. Indeed, methinks I would rather not marry him at all. Am I very heartless, Dr. Foreman? Nay, not in the least, madam. Your fears are most reasonable. The man in the winter of his life is indeed more likely to die. I assure you, madam, tis a medical fact. But, methinks you wish to know whether this man be afflicted with a grave health condition, do you not? Do it any ailment that might soon prove fatal? For sooth I do. That is my question precisely. Why, Dr. Foreman, tis as if you have a gift for reading minds. <laughs> uh, merely the gift of logical surmise, madam. Let us see whether a judgment of stars may calm your fears. Uh, does Mr... Uh, what was your gentleman's name? Mr. George Middleton, a wool merchant. <clears throat> does Mr. Middleton have any ailments that might hasten his death? by Voltaire yearning is exacerbated when confined to the sphere of heights. <laughs> Suffers from cardiac poison or passion, a condition that may end in death. In balance of phlegm, the illness cannot be cured and suggests a mild amount of black bile. Dropping down to the piss. That sounds right. 
<laughs> Mr. Sharp, I have exceeding excellent news for you. Mr. Middleton has only the most trifling of ailments, dropping down of the piss. <laughs> Though I must advise you that marrying a man who suffers from dropping down of the piss would pose certain uh, laundry-related challenges. But widowhood is not likely to be one of them. <laughs> At least, not imminently. Blessed day! What wondrous news! However, there is one other small thing in my chart. It seems your future husband does also suffer from an unreasonable fear of the heights. Such a fear could aggravate Mr. Middleton's condition. He would be advised to avoid tall buildings, bridges and mountains. Or at least be sure he takes a change of breeches along with him on any such outings. <laughs> oh, verily? Then I will follow your advice most carefully, Dr. Foreman. I will now to Mr. Middleton go and accept his proposal of marriage. So I'm assuming it's choices. Doctor of London's really made an opportunity by Will Warren. Charlatans claim that the title of Doctor of these men have never attended the university or can not be trusted. Any man found to be practicing medicine without a medical license should be prosecuted with the law. Okay. So I think that's a lot of sense. I'm adding to those doctors. I'm adding to those doctors. I'm adding to those doctors. That's what they say. Those doctors. What is the meaning of this warning being put about by the College of Physicians? Do they mean to do me harm? It is true that I do not have a medical license. What am I to do? Mayhap the stars will advise me. So if I get a license, or do I want to be nice to my people? Hmm. It seems that if I'm to avoid prosecution by the College of Physicians, I must obtain a medical license. Towards this end, doubtless the best course is to serve my querents well, treating their illnesses and problems with intelligence and sensitivity. For if I do, they may favour me with letters of recommendation, and I can use these to petition the University of Cambridge to grant me a licence. My second case of myself. I think I'd give myself a little recommendation. Who's this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who's this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who is come to inquire? Good day to you, sir. Oh, I see you having some difficulty. No, William, uh, fetch my guest a chair. Uh, no, no, he is good. I am just a little thief. As you wish. Uh, Mr. Uh... Signor Ricardo Ferraro. I am a gentleman of Venezia, come to make a trade in London. Uh, Venice? Oh, uh, it is a fine city, I hear. 
And how may I do you service this day, Signor Ferraro? I am come with una problema medicale, and you are most great dottore who does cure all a London, eh? You cure Ferraro too, see? Forsooth, I will seek to do so, Signor. Pray, describe your complaints, if you please. Uh, is burning when I make the water. <laughs> pain during <laughs> urination? <laughs> see, and is pain down here. Molto pain. <laughs> and pain in the lower back. Now, let us see what the stars can tell us. What ails Signor Riccardo Ferraro? Alright, suffers from the gout, which is caused by the hot, dry humor seeping into the joints of the foot. Suffering from stones in the kidneys, disease can occasionally loss of appetite, severe pain in the kidneys, urine, vomiting, difficulty passing urine. Has dysentery characters of the pain in the bowels, faintness, and oily stools. So, I mean, it sounds like kidney stones, I guess, because it's something with urine. Hmm. It is a case of stones in the kidney, I regret to say. But worry not, Signor. I will give you an ounce of my strong water to dislodge them. Drink this entire flask when you rise at dawn tomorrow. You may then expect to evacuate the stones by way of your privy member within just a few hours. Ah, you are a strong water. This water is to cure the plague, huh? Hmm. I thank you, Signor Fon. And now Ricardo Ferraro bids you good day. I, mean, I still kind of look like I have the plague. Big freckles. Only ten, come on. She is sure she is no beauty, tis true she lacks finesse. But every awkward hero needs his awkward princess. Ah, well met, Mistress Allen. Uh, pray tell, the last time I saw you, you were with child, methinks. Uh, pray tell, how fares. I would rather not talk about that, if you please. Oh, I see. I am full sorry, madam. What I'm come upon this? the matter I beg that your brings, pardon, madam. I prithee, madam, say on. I'm come about the new law. I know not what to do, and I would have counsel. You are in trouble with the law, madam. Nay, at least not yet. But my neighbours have begun to remark unkindly upon my absences, my Sunday absences from church. I'm afeard one of them may soon denounce me. Ah, tis the act against recusants you speak of. The law that obliges Catholics to attend church and take the English sacrament. You are of the Catholic faith, then, I take it? Aye, a Catholic. Uh, but as well, a, a law-abiding woman and a full loyal subject of the Queen. Long may she reign. I do not doubt it, madam. But to take the Protestant sacrament? Oh, tis heresy! So says the Pope in Rome. I risk being damned to hell if I do it, Dr. Foreman. Verily, I find myself in a most terrible bind. I see. Damned if you do, yet condemned if you do not. A cruel bind indeed. Well, let us see if the stars may untangle it for us. Should Mistress Avis Allen attend Protestant church services? Lady, if your neighbours consider speaking against you, 
"'Twould be on account of envy." Envy? But Mr. Allen and I have not been blessed with... I have not had the same fortune as other women. And to be sure, we are not wealthy. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, well, Hence, you must disabuse your neighbours of their ill-founded notions. Indeed, you must have them believe that you are, in truth, most poor. Then I am to have my neighbours pity me? Precisely so, madam. For if they were to pity you, they would never think of reporting you to the authorities. Nay, they would say, see how low poor Mistress Allen has come. She has no gown fine enough for church, so she finds an excuse not to come by pretending she is a Catholic. Oh, I see. Then I must wear coarser clothes as well. In truth, it will not be agreeable to be talked of so. But nay, it is naught but my vanity, and if a woman must sacrifice her comeliness for the sake of her soul, so be it. It is but a small price to pay. Oh, but be assured, madam, you would still be most... Uh, well, methinks you would appear no less comely in poorer attire. Oh, Dr. Foreman, you you make me blush. Forgive me, dear lady. It is not my intention to occasion you any. Madam, would you care to see my collection of Venetian glassware? I think I would. Indeed, I would like that very well. Coitus post consultio. Okay. So I had an affair. Here comes a beauty dark as night. Her hair does shine, her eyes are bright. Her damsel formed for man's delight. Good day to you, sir. I am Amelia Bassano of Bishopsgate, here for my consultation. Uh, welcome, Mistress Bassano. Bassano, tis an Italian name, is it not? Aye, it is, sir. Though I was born in London, my family are from Venice. They did come to London to gain employment as musicians at the royal court. Ah, I, I know one of your countrymen, Riccardo Ferraro, another one of my querents. Mayhap you know him? He hails from Venice, too. No, sir, I do not know him. Venice is a large city, and as such, is home to many thousands of men. And as I did mention, I was born in London. Uh, aye, of course. Uh, mayhap we turn our thoughts to what brings you hither this day. Uh, have you a question for me? Aye, sir, I wish to know what afflicts me, for my belly does begin to swell, and lately I oft find myself chundering after meals. Swollen abdomen and involuntary upward purging. Well, now, let us consult the stars to judge the cause of these troubles. What is ailing Mistress Emilia Bassano? I mean, Suffering from liver wear. The surface is about to flood the body. We do suggest illness will not last long. Is afflicted with a crick in the knees. <laughs> Excessive weight gain. <laughs> uh, I don't think I should pick that one. You are uh, never supposed to tell ladies of weight gain, so let's go with children, child. Uh, I neglected to ask. Is there a uh, Mr. Bassano? I. My father still lives. Uh, I mean to say, are you yet married, Mistress Bassano? I presume you are, for the stars indicate that you are... With child. <laughs> Wondrous news indeed. Ah, oh, I see. Of course, it is natural for a young lady to be a trifle anxious when she's expecting her first child. And I see you are anxious, are you not? I, Mr. Foreman, I own that I am. Well, doubtless you are anxious owing to the unpredictable nature of your condition. For instance, sometimes the child might emerge from its mother's womb early weeks or even months earlier than anticipated. This possibility is a medical fact, and one that should be explained to any husband you may... Uh... Do you see what I'm saying, Mistress Bassano? Nay, not in the least, sir. 
Ah, some of my maiden querents, I assume you are still unmarried and therefore a maiden, when they find themselves inexplicably with child, they oft do not remain unmarried for long. I advise you to discuss this with your family without delay, Mistress Bassano. Doubtless they will be keen to make the arrangements for you. I see. Yes, of course. I must lose no time in finding a husband. I thank you, Dr. Foreman. Good day. She spies a looking glass, for tis a portal out through which the gates of hell do blast. A deadly and foul wind that comes direct from Satan's bar. Blessed morrow to you, Dr. Foreman. I am Mary Payne of Four Street in Lambus, and come to seek your counsel about my neighbours. Good morrow, Mistress Payne, and well met. Ah, what trouble do your neighbours give you? Uh, they play their lutes into the night, perchance? Mayhap a, a neighbour has cast a malignant spell upon your cabbages. Why, sir, tis no trifling matter. Indeed, tis a matter of grave importance. Doubtless you do know we have a Catholic living on Four Street. A woman by the name of Avis Allen. Ah, yes. I did hear tell that Mistress Allen subscribes to the Romish faith. Uh, but tis no crime to be a Catholic, is it, madam? At least, not at present. Aye, but harbouring a Jesuit priest is, Dr. Foreman. These evenings past, I have spied a man sneaking in and out of the Allen's house. Tis my reckoning, the man is a priest who is going hither and thither all over Lambeth to perform the Catholic Mass and take confessions. Doubtless Mr. Allen is hiding him in one of those little cupboards. You mean to say you think Mr. Allen has installed a priest hole in his house? A secret room hidden behind the wood panelling of a wall. Indeed I do. I am certain that he has such a hole, and that a priest is going in and out of Mr. Allen's hole from dusk till dawn. Ah, uh, verily? Uh, how troubling. But surely you are mistaken, madam, for under the cover of darkness, how can you be sure the man you did spy was not Mr. Allen himself? Nay, nay, t'was not Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen is a fine, tall figure of a man, whereas the figure I did spy was very narrow and malformed in appearance. A scrawny little imp of a man he was. I see. Now, you must not think me intolerant, Dr. Foreman. If Mistress Allen must cling to her idolatrous backward beliefs, tis her own affair, and I have no wish to cause trouble for the Allens. And even though Mistress Allen has lately not been seen in church, thus far I have held my tongue about it. But we residents of Four Street are decent English folk. We will not abide an agent of Rome sneaking around our neighbourhood, muttering incantations in some devilish foreign tongue. I think you mean Latin, madam. But before I act upon my suspicions, I think it wise to know if there be any truth in them. Then let us see what the stars can tell us. Uh, who is this mysterious stranger, and why does he frequent the Allen's house late at night? I'm assuming it's probably my character having enough to play with her. Shades are harvest cruel intentions toward the Allen's household, goods in possession. Mistress Payne will die suddenly, because the end of this consultation you will not warrant a scrawny little imp of a man. Relationships that want trust you for her. Some maternal instincts have been thwarted by her ability to bear a child, but she suddenly persists to try and reverse her infertility. I'm 
gonna go with the unborn child? Ah, twould seem the man you saw is a foreigner who's been secreted into the Allen house to aid Mistress Allen with their family difficulties. Family difficulties? Come, come, Dr. Foreman. Pray speak plain. Ah, well, as you doubtless know, the Allens have never been blessed with a living child. Mayhap tis the belief of Mistress Allen that the seed of a foreigner would prove more powerful than the, uh, demonstrably less successful seed of Mr. Allen. Then, tis naught but adultery. Fornication with a foreigner. Huh? Mistress Allen will pay dearly for such sinning. Her soul will be damned to an afterlife beset by the exquisite tortures of hell's capricious demons. Aye, well, according to scripture, that is technically true. But to harbour a Jesuit priest is a far greater evil. We must be glad that Mistress Allen commits naught but the sin of adultery. Conducted late at night with a man who gives forth strong foreign seed. You have given me much to think on, Dr. Foreman. Blessed day. I am glad to have been of service, Mistress Payne. Just cause trouble. Yeah, it still gives me twenty though. When the quirant does rock a continental frock, when the quirant does rock a continental frock, when his Italian flair features all facial hefties for all. God give you good day, signor. And how may I assist you? Tis I, Riccardo Ferraro, come once again to see the great dottore, Simon Foreman. <coughs> so I see. What brings you this day? I bring myself to you, so you trade my illness. Tis a very grave. And, uh, what might this illness be? Perchance we might start with your complaints. First problem is a laughter that cannot be controlled. <laughs> Uncontrollable laughter, you say? <laughs> I see. Anything else? Next problem, the dancing that cannot be controlled. Uncontrollable dancing. And yet, uh, you do not appear to be dancing at present. What can I say? It is uncontrollable dancing. I cannot control when I dance. Nay, nay, it is a fair point. <laughs> Doubtless, my disease, whatever it may be, is a very rare and very difficult to diagnose. But of course, if it be beyond your medical understanding... Let me assure you, Signor, that whatever is said of us on the continent, the learning of we English doctors is unparalleled. There is no better medical care to be had than in London. Now, let us see whether the stars may tell us something of your unusual and troubling illness. Suffering from shock, a disease that occasionally ends up in pain, belching, and bloating of the stomach. I mean, I want to say this because he's burping, but he's not complaining about it. have been bitten by a tarantula. Its venom has been creeping throughout your body, provoking the, the wanton laughter and dancing you're experiencing. The tarantula is a rare spider from foreign climes. Doubtless it travelled with you from Venice, hiding itself among your belongings. Aye, uh, doubtless you are right this time. The venom may be expelled from the body using a combination of heat and music. Hmm. I advise you to have a lutenist come by your house to sing and play for you while you bide near the fire. But take care not to insult the musicians playing, for whilst you will find it most loathsome, it will only be on account of the venom. Ah, molto bene, signor Foreman. 
I will do as you advise. Riccardo Ferraro bids you good day. Alright, well, I think we're gonna cut it here. Uh, so far, I think this game is actually a lot of fun. It's kind of a simple game, there's really not much to it because it just kind of seems like you're just kind of guessing on things. But I absolutely love the music and the voice acting, so I think this is definitely worth your time. So, if you have Game Pass PC, I'd check it out. Alright, well, until next time, catch you guys later.